Good evening. We the Village, produced by Ron Hall, and I am your host, Sharonda Allen. We have two wonderful young ladies here with us this evening. We have uh, Danielle and Latifa. I would like for you ladies to fully introduce yourselves and let us know um, who you are. My name is uh, Danielle Worth. I'm originally from New Jersey. I graduated from Howard University and I got my MBA at Keene University. Excellent. Hello, my name is Latifa Olivier. I am originally from South Jersey, more Central Jersey, Asbury Park, down the shore. I have my bachelor's degree from King University, and soon, shortly after, I went ahead and got my master's degree from King University as well. I am currently the CEO of Allo Federal Services, and by day, I am an investigator for the U.S. Department of Labor. Excellent, excellent. So we, we do share our educational backgrounds together. The three of us are alums of King University. I actually got my bachelor's and my master's from King. Oh, nice. It's a great place, I tell people all the time. <laughs> <laughs> so um, Danielle, can you tell us about your organization? Sure, our, our organization is called, um, our organization is called Uprising Stars Inc. And we give out scholarships to high school students that want to go to college. So I'm actually the CEO and founder, and it's actually a family business. So it consists of my mom and my sister, and um, we started it about six years ago. And so primarily we just give out scholarships to high school students that want to go to college. Um, and we just really want to be able to help them to go to college any way that we possibly can. That is beautiful, thank you. So Latifa, tell us about your organization. My nonprofit organization, the name is LO Federal Services. We provide a federal government services to recent graduates, veterans, and students that are looking to get into the federal workforce through internship. I started this program because as an undergrad, I went through a struggle of graduating and getting out and being on your own and being left alone with no program, no middleman to help you after graduation. So I wanted a program to help students. Once you get out of college and you're out there looking for a job, you're not alone. You shouldn't be discouraged. Come to LO Federal Services. We walk you through everything. We mentor you. We help you with your resume. We help you with a cover letter. We even help you learn how to talk for the interview, mm -hmm. prepare you for that too. Mm -hmm. nice. well, that's about it in a nutshell. Thank you. So what motivated you to actually start your nonprofit, Danielle? So my family and I were doing things, giving back to the community separately. And so my sister was, you know, um, doing something and my mom was, you know, we were doing everything individually and we decided that we wanted to come together collectively. And um, I always share that I was going to Howard and I was a student ambassador, which meant that I just give, I gave out tours to prospective students that wanted to go to Howard. And so this one young lady um, that I wound up giving a tour to, you know, her parents that came from Detroit, I was kind of tired. I really didn't want to give the tour. And my boss was like, listen, you got to give the tour. And I'm like, I was kind of tired. I had just took one of my exams. And so it was so rewarding because she was so excited. It was the same joy I had to go to Howard. It was the same passion, the same drive. And so her parents weren't sure if they were going to be able to send her to go to, uh, to Howard. They weren't, you know, necessarily for finance reasons, different location, they weren't quite sure if they wanted her to come all the way to Howard. So she left, you know, I told her, I gave her my information, she left. And then the next spring, the next fall, she came to Howard and she found me on campus. And she was like, Danielle, Danielle, it's Ashley, remember me? And I had forgot I was 20 years old, you know, <laughs> I did so many college tours and it was a great feeling. And I just said to myself, if I could make, if I could have an impact on someone else's life to help them make a great choice and I wanted to do that. And so when we started searching to try to do a nonprofit or try to say, how can we give back? I went back to that experience I had at Howard and said, you know what? I would like to feel like that all the time. I would like to do something that I can help someone else or a young person go to college. And so that was kind of like the foreground to start Uprising Stars. We just kind of started brainstorming to try to figure out, you know, what was the best avenue to do. And we, my sister and I felt like college was a place where we excelled and changed our lives. And that's kind of why we wanted to start it. That is wonderful. And I think that um, many times when people start nonprofits or they give back, there's always some sort of personal motivation that, you know, I needed direction, I wanted direction, I, I, I needed the help or I needed, needed the guidance. 
and uh, we see issues that need to be tackled and I'm just so grateful that there are so many people who don't just get their own but they help others right. to get the education and the help after they get their education so I commend you ladies so much <laughs> for your efforts and your organizations so um, I did you know hear about your motivation so basically that's your mission um, what are some of the challenges Danielle um, that you have as far as running your organization um, well, we're six years in, so some of the challenges that we faced early on are a little bit different from now. So some of them were resources, you know, just being able to have the funds to do different things. And you hear people all the time that want to start a business, whether it's nonprofit or for profit, you need money. And some to some degree that you, you do need money with nonprofit, you're not actually selling something that you're going to make a profit for. So resources is, was a huge challenge and just being able to get capital you know, was another challenge being able to get things or, you know, um, media stuff or just get the word out, you know, just marketing PR was also a challenge because we were an organization that wanted to help, but nobody knew who we were. So that was a challenge. Well, how do we get out there? How do we get our name out there? How do we get people? And so as we started going on, we started getting mentors. I started finding out different programs and different people that did it before me and the process became easier. Right. So basically you need to solicit donors yes who will um, help to right. know, contribute to your cause right because in a nonprofit most of the funds are coming from you know the public you know we're mm -hmm. a 501c3 which means that all the donations and charitable donations we get are tax deductible so in order so that means all of our funding is coming from the public whether it's a corporation a small business or an individual like yourself you know we still you know you get a write-off for it but we have to go out and solicit that money so we try to have you know fundraisers and different media outlets and different organizations where we can actually tell about what we're doing mm -hmm. and so that way you might feel okay well I work at this company and I want to give back and I want to help them be able to give more scholarships right so and that's one of the good things that when you network with people even if you don't solicit them as an individual they can talk to the people at their company and mm -hmm. they can become corporate sponsors and mm -hmm. corporate sponsorship is so important yes you know so let, you know, let me ask Latifah what are some of your challenges <laughs> <laughs> honestly it's an ongoing challenge I <laughs> sort of like went through the same thing she's going through right now as far as getting your name out there, letting people know who you are, what you're trying to do, what your mission is. Because when, I'm, when I go out, when I speak to students, I want someone to be in the audience and say, oh, I went through the same thing she went through. Mm -hmm. And I'm trying to target th those type of audience. Yeah. Like the, the students who have a drive, who really right. want it. Like how do I reach out to them? Because my program, not everyone is eligible, unfortunately, right. for that particular program. You have to have the drive. You have to want to to, to, to be better, and you have to be, want to get into your career. So as far as getting funding, that's a big challenge for everyone mm -hmm. because, of course, we, we, we need to be certified. Everyone on my team has to be certified. We need um, funding for materials. Um, actually place to actually have meetings and come together so those are mo most of the challenges I faced right so it just seems like some of the challenges are soliciting the funds right you know um, and what's interesting is that money circulates all sorts of different ways and I think one of right. the biggest ways to solicit funds is through publicity and mm -hmm. to get the word out you know mm -hmm marketing you know and this is one of the reasons why I did invite you ladies on because I love what you're doing and I think it's important to highlight these sorts of things so um, is there any advice that you would like to uh, give to those who might want to start a nonprofit Danielle I'll, um, I'll start with you with that um, I would just say anytime you start a business whether it's nonprofit or for profit or specifically for nonprofit you want to have a passion to do it you know because it's hard and it's difficult and it may be something that you're doing in addition to your day job and so you're gonna have challenges and so you want to be passionate about it so you don't give up because it's, it's not easy and so just getting the 501 c3 you know if you talk to other people that have their that have it they're like they have stories of you know what they went through to get it because that helps them so now you can go into a fortune 500 company or either a small business and say you know would you would you sponsor my event and they can get a tax write-off if you're going for a nonprofit so I would my advice would be be passionate be patient 
you know, have a mentor, someone that you can go talk to that is already, already have done it or been in it because you're going to need someone who's going down a path that you're going down so they can encourage you and keep your spirit lifted so that you don't get sidetracked by the challenges and give up. I feel so inspired right now. <laughs> <laughs> don't get sidetracked. I love it because um, I'm not even going to go into some of my other personal struggles, but I've been writing grants and you know, I struggle with the fact that I don't have my own nonprofit because with all the work that I do, I'm like, well, let me just go through, go through this organization and I get the money and I just do it. Mm -hmm. And I'm not even doing the big, big passion part of building it. And I'm like, I know I need to build my own, but right now I'm just doing the work. So, mm -hmm. I mean, I'm sitting here like, you know what, now it's got to be in stone. So Latifah, what, what are some of the advice that you have to offer? Honestly, I like to pick it back off of, of what she said. You definitely need a passion. You gotta believe in what you're doing and how you're going to, going to try to reach out to your audience. Mm -hmm. Another thing is getting your 501c3 is no joke. I mean, mm -hmm. if you Google and you type in how to get your 501c3, there's all types of attorneys, scams out there. You have to be careful. You have to do your research. You have to talk to people because you really don't have to spend five, six thousand dollars to hire an attorney to write your bylaws. There's a, there's a lot of government programs, irs.gov. Call someone from the IRS. Ask them mm -hmm. for direction. They will walk you through the process. It's not all that difficult, right. you know, but don't get into going online and talking to talk all these different attorneys, call the source. The source is IRS. They're the right. one who grant you that piece of paper, that 501c3. Okay. And they can, they have representative that can walk you through the process. Mm -hmm. So do your research, talk to people, and call the IRS yourself. They are the source. Wow, thank you. That's <laughs> like straight to the chase because there's Absolutely. all this legal zoom and all these other organizations just like some of the student loan consolidation people they some people ripped me off not too long ago but you know god is good and he does not like ugly so no, <laughs> it's going to be dealt with right but you know and just on that vein you know buyer beware yeah we have to be you know educated and knowledgeable consumers and uh, whatever we get into, we have to always fully do our research, yes. do our homework, mm -hmm. and be clear and, and follow through. And, I, and that's what I'm getting from the two of you as yeah. far as advice. Mm -hmm. And that just goes for everything in life, yeah, you know? Yeah, you have to Absolutely. definitely, you have to definitely do your work, do your home before you spend in money, especially yeah. when you're trying to start a business because everything counts. With a nonprofit, the 501c3 is basically like the life of the organization because mm -hmm. it is it makes it easier to get funding now. Right. You know, so if you don't have that, then it's harder for you to go into the Fortune 500 companies or the small businesses and get someone to give you a donation. Right. Absolutely. So let's let's get to some of your specific questions, Danielle. How many scholarships have you given out so far? So we've given out, um, including this year, mm -hmm. um, 11 scholarships, mm -hmm. um, totaling about $10,000. Nice. And so we typically um, give out a scholarship. It's not a full ride at this point. We, you know, most of our funding is based on um, the public, so corporations, sponsorships. So we normally give about $1,000, you know, to each student. You know, they have to, it's in conjunction with any other financial aid or student loans that they have. Mm -hmm. So um, we're definitely able to help. We're, we're, we're happy that we've been able to assist them. Some of the students have had aid and they just needed tuition or books or something like that. So, mm -hmm. you know, we're kind of happy that we were able to give at least help 11 students so far. That is beautiful. 11 is, is, is great. It's, it's more than zero. Right. You know, <laughs> so Latifa, you know, you uh, talk about helping prepare people for interviews and resume writing. So uh, what makes your service different than other uh, resume writers? That's a very good question. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, with my program, I'm focusing on a particular workforce. I'm focusing mm -hmm. on the federal government workforce, totally mm -hmm. different from the civilian world. Mm -hmm. um, there's only one way to apply for a federal government job. You have to go through usajob.gov. And there are specific guidelines on how your resume should be structured and format to get passed through this system. Uh, with private companies, it's who you know. You know, if I know this person, they can give this the manager my resume. With the federal government, there's a system that you have to go through. Mm -hmm. I mean, my mother could be the director of OPM, and I need a job. 
it's not that easy. The government is very structured, so well, they it want. was. It used to be. I'm not going to get into all that. Ravine, right? oh, don't get me started. <laughs> okay. <Yeah>. But, <laughs> but honestly, it, it's the process. I mean, I'm sure there's loopholes, but, you know, if, if you want mm -hmm. to get in the correct way, if you have the job, you, you're going to do your homework, you're going to try to go through the process the correct way mm -hmm. because you don't want to get out there and get sidetracked and go through a system that has nothing to do with what your main focus is. Mm -hmm. So my program is basically formatting your resume and um, taking your education background, your experiences, format it in a way where this system, because the system is a computer-based system, it's not an extra person looking over your resume, it's mm -hmm. an extra computer looking for keywords. Wow. So if you don't have those keywords in your resume, you can be a doctor. It happened to me. I had my master's, I had my bachelor's, I had all this experience, and I'm applying for clerical jobs, and I was getting denied. Wow. I'm like, it doesn't make any sense. Right. I, it, it just bugged my mind until I find this piece of information. Mm -hmm. Knowledge is power. It is. Mm -hmm. And just adding the keywords into your resume and getting you selected as the highly qualified candidate that you are. You have the education, you have the experience. It, there should be no reason why a person shouldn't get selected if you have the qualification that the announcement says that you need. So you know, that's what basically what I do. You know, it's so interesting because it sounds like your organization gives like game cheat codes almost. Not that you're <laughs> cheating, but it's that, you know, if we don't know the right words to say to get into places because that's there right. are key words yeah. for everything. Yeah. It's just like when, as, a, I'm, as an educator, if I'm scoring an essay, there's certain key words. They can talk all pretty and use all these but there's certain keywords that have to be present in order for them to get that score because there is a rubric and that's what this is all about there's a rubric okay. for scoring applicants oh absolutely yeah so i i'm, I'm so grateful that you 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 do that mm -hmm. um so let me ask you um danielle mm -hmm. how do you find your scholarship recipients um, so typically what we do is we contact the high school students. We have a, a, a listing of the schools by county. Okay. And then we contact the high school counselors in that particular school or district or county, mm -hmm. however, however we're doing it. And um, we actually, some of the schools have a um, scholarship packet for the seniors. Mm. And so we ask them if they can put our scholarship application in the packet. Nice. And so what the student does then is, you know, they would give it to like if they have 200 seniors or 400 seniors, they would give them the packet. And if, if not, you know, we either email the application to the guidance counselors and then they would give the application to the students. Um, sometimes we do talk to churches, we talk to individuals. Nice. Mm -hmm. And so we would just have them go onto our website. So if I went to a networking event and I had a local church or someone that worked at a school as yourself and you say well you know I'm a teacher you know I want to be able to how can my students apply we would give a give a business card and we could email you the application the application is online it's on our website and um, which is www.uprisingstarsinc.org and then what you do is go to application hit apply you download the application and so the students have full range to go to the application, view it, and then um, April 1st is always the deadline where they actually have to select it back to us or send the application back to us. Nice, so my question is, is it only for graduating high school seniors or is it also for students who are already in college? It's for graduating seniors. Okay, so what nice. we do for the other, for the, for the rest of the high school students, so like let's just say from middle school to 11th grade, we give out, we go give uh, college workshops. And nice. we kind of tell them about the college process. If they don't know, we talk about the scholarships, we talk about our scholarship, financial aid. So it kind of prepares them for our scholarship. So when they become a senior, they can apply. And then for those students who may not be going to college, but they have um, a skill in something, mm -hmm. we teach an entrepreneurship boot camp series where it teaches them how to become an entrepreneur so yes. um, those are the kind of the three components that we focus on you know if they're um, whether it's scholar whether whether you are going to apply for the scholarship whether you're a junior and you want to get some more information about it before you apply or whether you won't be going to college at all and for whatever reason and you want to start your own business nice that sounds great yes so Latifa similar type of question how are you planning to reach out to your clients to get them involved? Like, how do you recruit clients? Like, where do you get people from? Where's your pool? Like, for example, 
Danielle goes to high schools. Where do you go? Okay, so I actually go to the universities. All right. I will go to, most of the time I'll get invited to speak at a job fair or yes. some type of networking event at a university. And I will introduce my company, let them know who I am, what I do, what I'm trying to accomplish. Most of the time, or a lot of time, the students would come to me and I will talk to them and we'll have a one-on-one -on -one conversation. They'll come to me, sort of kind of like a mentoring session. I'll find out who they are. For, for my program, you have to be a recent graduate or if you are an undergrad, you're working on getting into a specific field, then we can help you with internship. But most of the time, you have to be a recent graduate. So basically, I would sit down, talk to them, um, take a copy of their resume, see mm -hmm. how it is, have them fill out a builder for me. Mm -hmm. I would take that, and then I would go on and restructure their resume and have them go into USA Jobs and apply. I also help them out <coughs> with the, um, the profile, setting up their profile, make sure the profile is okay, make sure they have the grade point average on there, the specific questions that needs to be answered before you can submit your profile to the federal government because if it's un incomplete, then you don't have a chance because now mm -hmm. your, yes, your resume is fine, but then again, your profile is incomplete. So I help the students with all of that. Lovely, say. yeah, it's very nice. So Danielle, do you keep in contact with the recipients of your awards? Yes, we actually, um, so after they get the, so we have, when we present the student with the scholarship, we, we have a gala is, you know, we have an annual scholarship awards gala that we have every year. Um, this year is going to be July 29th at the Hilton Hotel um, in Elizabeth. And so basically we award um, the scholarship to the recipients that night. So we get a chance to meet them, we meet their family, we have, we make it a really nice event, you know, where it's formal, where they get dressed up, you know, they bring their parents, we have a networking event, we have t uh, entertainment. So we basically just want to celebrate them, mm -hmm. you know, for being, for having this award or, you know, just kind of doing that. And, you know, sometimes they've never received anything. And so just meeting them and me meeting that process and just being able to just really see who they are and kind of see the excitement in their eyes that they've been selected for something is kind of like just kind of key for us you know nice 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 so um when we deal with selection and candidates how do you select your candidates and what qualifies them okay so i have an application process and as okay. we all know with federal government there's background checks <laughs> there's <laughs> education checks there's credit checks so we pre-screen you, um, you will go onto our website, you will fill out an application, I will invite you in for an interview, make sure that everything is okay, and if it's not okay based on what it is, I can help you fix it, because I'm a fixer as well. <laughs> <laughs> so that's, um, that's mainly it, a pre-screen process. Right, right. Um, one thing I wanted to add too mm -hmm. is that, you know, for us is that when, you know, some of the students go away, we usually send them an email Mm -hmm. and ask them how they're doing in school and they, they'll respond back to us like some of them was on a dean's list some of them got to do like an internship program yes. and so we kind of put that information on our website so that way people that have maybe given um, a donation can kind of kind of see where the recipient is doing or what they've been up to since that particular award gala so it's almost like a tracking yeah them, which is great um, do you actually have any sort of tracking mechanism for your actually, organization? I, well, actually, yes. Um, with the with federal government workforce, once you're a federal government employee, your information is public. Yes. So yes. I see, I can track you down yes. and see what you're you doing. Them, yes. <laughs> right. I mean, it's it's out there. Right. Google right, right, my right, name, right, everything right. will come up. Mm -hmm. So um, most of the time, actually, I I have helped had the opportunity to help two candidate that was very successful. They both got federal government work jobs. And they're, everyone's just so excited. They reach out to me. They're giving me success stories. They're telling great. me they update and how grateful they are to have went through me and finally got into their dream job. Right. So awesome. yeah. I just keep track of them through um, online or they'll reach out to me through email. Right, so let me ask, this is a double kind of question. Okay. Um, what's your next project and where do you see yourself in the next five years, Danielle, first. 
Um, our next project is basically trying to expand. Right now we're in the metropolitan area, which is like New York, New Jersey. We do a little bit of Philly, mm -hmm. a little bit of Connecticut. So we just kind of want to expand, you know, to grow um, a little bit, maybe go to Delaware, Maryland, you know, DC area, you know, and kind of expand, I say within the next couple of years will be a goal for us. And in five years, you know, we would like to see, or our organization would like to be something that's national. We would like to be able to offer it to someone in Colorado or California or Detroit or you know Florida you know who can apply to the application you know can apply for the scholarship and we have more funds to give we want to increase the amount of funds that we give and become national that sounds great <laughs> <laughs> that sounds exciting I love expansion and growth yes yes so Latifa let me ask you the same questions you know uh, what is your next project and where do you see yourself and your organization in the next five years Okay, so, well, I just started, so <laughs> <laughs> about one, two How years long? in. How oh, I was going to say. Yes, okay. two years okay. in. Okay, all right. Okay. So my biggest thing is the networking and the communication, getting myself out there. Actually, this month, the end of this month, mm -hmm. I have uh, an interview with CNN. Oh, good. It will good. be in Atlanta. So good. basically, they will be asking me questions, sort of kind of like what we're doing here, mm -hmm. um, who I am, who I'm trying to reach and what I'm doing. And hopefully that goes well. <laughs> yes. And in five years, I, I want to reach out to more students. I want to try to go out and get myself out there, get funding, so I'm able to help more students. There's so many students that need help that's out there alone and just looking for direction. So I want to go ahead and be able to, to help everyone. Because right now, I have a limited amount of students that I can help since I'm funding everything myself. Wow. So now, I, well, in five years, um, I want to at least help at least over 100 students. Nice. That's so nice. That's, mm -hmm. that's the number one goal. Mm -hmm. Nice goals, ladies. Yeah. Um, you know, it's important to give back because we can get to where we are and sit here in our ivory towers, mm -hmm. uh, but we could also give back to others and help others along their journey, someone who may need that extra push you know, to be able to buy those books, you know, mm -hmm. with that thousand dollars. Or that person that says, you know, I always wanted to work for the government and I just need to make sure my resume is chosen and that I have the right information on there. Um, so I just want to say thank you for creating your organizations. Thank you for your passion. <laughs> thank you for your guidance. Your information has been streamed on the screen. <laughs> and um, I, I look forward to working with you ladies in the future, we got so many things to work on. Your organizations, King University alumni, right? And um, I thank you so much for coming, ladies. Well, thank oh, you. Thank you for the opportunity. Yeah, I appreciate you. you. Yes, and thank you for tuning in to We the Village. <laughs>